So this is an original South Thomas U.S. Navy clock. It's made in 1943. I've been looking forward to um, looking at this. So the first problem is, of course, there's no glass in it. The second problem was that the second hand and the minute hand were, were badly bent. I've, I've straightened them already, so they're, they're not bent anymore. They look really nice. We're gonna take the uh, thing out of its housing now. So there's three screws. I just, I just took two out, so we'll take the third out just so it doesn't take as long on the video. There we go. 11.43 on it. So I, I, that's probably December of 1943 is when this was made. You can see the escapement there. And it looks in pretty good shape. I mean, things aren't, that's kind of sticky right there. So we'll have to go through and uh, see what it is. But all in all, I mean, first glance, it's, it's, that's uh, very pretty and very salvage, salvageable. This is the main spring, spring back plate, the main spring and the, the back plate for the for the housing for the Seth Thomas U.S. Navy clock. So one of the things that was wrong is that the the, the, the back plate was it was on, but it had popped out of its groove right there. So as I was um, letting down the spring, I noticed that it was kind of running not very smooth where the spring kind of surged and stuff and, and the reason is is because the center point in, in the back here was not being held rigidly because because the back plate was not was not pushed in so that might help it run i put some special oil on the mainspring actually what you use is slick 50 50 on this it's a great for things that are sliding between one another but then you can see how I uh, how you install the back blade. It's just a slight press fit in there. You can just tap it in. So they have the clock to part. Things are looking pretty good. Um, this little second hand was actually a, the, the arm was slightly bent, so I, I straightened it up. It looks pretty good now. So the next thing, uh, it, it just needs to be cleaned up and then the holes ring. Some of the pivot pins, the pivot pins on this are really small, but I, I'm just, that, that's a pivot pin right there. Some of the pivot pins are a little um, worn, which is which is normal. And so what I do is I, I put them in my little lathe here. I love this little lathe. And so I have one of your gears in there and then, um, and then I polish it. So this is actually a polishing, uh, it's just sandpaper, 1500, 1000, and then 2000. So um, so what I do is, is turn on the lathe, and then I just take each one, and I know I have one hand to do this now, so I just take each one and then sandwich it in there like that. Start with a thousand and then work your way up. Let's put on the mainspring now. Goes on pretty easy, just slides right in. So that that gear interfaces with that gear. That's the gear to the spring, to the internal spring. I oil these arbors before I install these. You don't really see it, it's I typically just do it off camera. There you go. So the movement is <clears throat> partially assembled now. 
I've cleaned all the pivot holes. I've cleaned the pivot pins, polished, polished the pivot pins, straightened the one shaft that needed straightened right there. And then so you can see it works pretty good. I see a little see a little wobble in, in that gear there where it's slightly bent, but I don't think that's gonna affect anything. This is a really precision made instrument back in the day. You can see that that minute arbor is it's spinning really fast and you can see I mean that's the second arbor actually. You can see that it's now it's it's, it's really straight. I, I had to straighten it. So I did find a little tiny defect in this wheel too. I had to take it back apart. That was a wheel that had a slight bend in it that I talked about when it was when it, all the wheels were spinning. That may have been some sort of little impact got that tooth. So that was this is after I uh, cleaned up that tooth and tried to straighten it up a little bit. I'm not sure that this was actually causing one of the problems, but um, but it was worth fixing. So, and this is on this small gear. This is the last gear before um, it drives the minute wheel. And the main winding spring is just held in with a bridge. That's what this piece is called in a clock. And then there's four screws. This is the escapement mechanism. I was really surprised because it's a small escapement mechanism. Of course, you can't use a pendulum on a boat, so you have a recoil spring. This is kind of a special escapement that you'd use on a watch, for example, but it's really tiny. I don't know if you can see. For me, it's tiny. It's um, um, smaller than I normally work with. So this here, you can see it's very precision made. So this is the escapement wheel right there. So that's where the tick and the talk happens. And that's the, that's and then this, this piece here is the equivalent of the pendulum right there. And you can see there's crystals on the end. This is makes it a, a very low friction um, movement, high precision. Then this is the, the spring. It's a recoil spring. Yeah, everything looks like it's like it's working to me. So this is the escapement assembled. I'll show you how it works. This is the spring. You can see that they call it the anchor. So this is the heartbeat of the of the clock. So the spring moves like this, and you can see that anchor rocking back and forth. And there's the escapement wheel, the, the special wheel with the special teeth. And you can see those are really unusual shaped teeth there. On the back, you can see the gear. This is the gear that interfaces with the last wheel. This is the escapement, getting ready to install it. So you can see the, um, the, 
gear. This is the, the bottom gear that's attached to the escapement and it is going to interface with that gear. There's some pins on the bottom of this so that uh, on the bottom of this plate so this can only go in one location. It's, it's, it's a very precision machine piece here. I got to wobble it around, wiggle it around a little bit, find there, there it goes. There's. Clearly the escapement had four screws in the beginning. There's only two that were here when I took it apart. I mean, it's almost a hundred years old, 80 years old. Maybe they fell out or something during, during all the motion on the ship. Wow, look at that. It's running. Can you hear it? All right, so um, so someone custom cut a new faceplate. Uh, it really fits good, but in order to help it, I'm just putting a little bit of two-part epoxy in a couple spots just to make sure this thing does not come out of here and break again. I just put it in a needle normally. This works really nice. Put it in a needle. I actually just mix it up right in the needle case. 50-50, 50% hardener, 50% resin. It's pretty cool, this is a clear epoxy. You can see the clock is running. It was um, stopping a little bit. It's kind of running a little bit and stopping a little bit. So I took it apart again. I did find that one gear that was bent. I found a little nick in the gear. In the tooth of gear, is the two gear. So I fixed that and I looped it up and cleaned it up a little better. So maybe that'll do it. This is the Seth Thomas US Navy clock complete. It's hanging on my wall just I'm watching it, see how it does for a day or two.